he pointed his finger 20 times to the east. The jar will come from the east. But what about prior to that, when he will not be in our dimension of time? Where will he be, for example, when, when his day is like a year? Where will he be? Do we have any answer to that? He's going to be on earth. But we won't be able to see him. The angels, are they here in this room? Yes. How many? Each one of you have two angels on your forehead, on your shoulders. So there are many angels right here in this room. They are on earth. Are they in our dimension of time? No. No, no, no. So they don't perform salat according to our timetable. Huh? Fajr? For them is not Fajr for us. Hmm? If we were to go into that day in which they live, and we have to perform salat, can we perform salat according to this timetable? No, we don't have to calculate to do it. Hmm? Can an angel come into our world? Can an angel come into our dimension of time so we can see the angel? Huh? Huh? Yes, which one? Yes, Jibra'il alayhi salam came as a human being right in the masjid. Are there jinn in this masjid now? Oh yes, they are. They are not. Can we see them? Are they in our dimension of time? No, they are not. But can they enter into our dimension of time? Yes. Mr. Shaitan himself, Iblis, he came as a human being, as an old man, you remember, with a walking stick. So the Dajjal will enter into our dimension of time one day. We see him. But prior to that, in a day which is like a year, where will he be? It is from that location that he will commence his attack. He will begin his effort. Number one, to liberate the Holy Land. Number two, to bring the Jews back to the Holy Land. Number three, to restore the state of Israel. Number four, you know what's number four. From that location he will begin the, the, the effort. Where will it be? Fortunately for us, we have the answer. And it is also in Sahih Muslim. It is known as the Hadith of Tamim al-Dari. Listen to it carefully now. Tamim al-Dari was a Christian who took the Shahada and became a Muslim in Medina. He came to the Prophet والسلام, and narrated an experience which he had. The Prophet والسلام, after the Salat in the Masjid asked the people, sit down, sit down. I have something to tell you. Tamim al-Dari has come to me and told me something about Dajjal which confirms what I have been saying to you. So we know that what is contained in this story is true. What did Tamim Muddari experience? He said that he and some forty of his companions went on board a ship. So you need water, eh? So they have to go in some place where you can travel with a ship, a sea or an ocean. And when they went on board the ship, a storm came and the storm blew the ship for forty days before, no, no, for a whole month, sorry, not forty days. 
the storm blew the ship for a whole month before they reached land. Now, if you are on the western side of Arabia, which is Hijaz, and you get on board a ship, there are only two, two seas on which you can travel. One is the Mediterranean Sea, and the other is the Red Sea, only these two. But it seems very much unlikely, in fact impossible, for a ship to be in the Red Sea and for a storm to be blowing and that that ship did not touch land for a whole month because the Red Sea is very narrow. And so I have chosen to eliminate the Red Sea and I have chosen to remain with only the Mediterranean Sea. After they reached land, then they got off the ship onto a boat and they went and it was an island. And on the island they saw a strange beast. It was very hairy, so hairy, so much hair that you could hardly distinguish the head from the tail. So this beast is concealing its identity. And the beast spoke and said that I am, what? Huh? I am? Are you guessing now? I am Jassas. Jassas means a spy. A spy. So this is number one, an island about one month's journey from the western side of Arabia. Number two, this is an island which conceals its true identity. Number three, this is an island of those who have PhDs in spying, in espionage, huh? in intelligence work. Jesus then said to them, there is someone waiting to see you over there at the monastery, Christian monastery. So this is a Christian island. When they went to the monastery, they found this young man powerfully built, hmm, curly hair, but he was in chains. His hand chained to his neck, his legs chained. And this man started to question them, a number of questions. Uh, the Nabi al-Ummi, has he arrived in Medina? Nabi al-Ummi means, it doesn't, doesn't mean the Nabi who cannot read and write. No. It means the Nabi who is not a Jew. The Nabi who is Gentile. Has he arrived in Medina? Yes, he has. Are the people accepting him? Some are accepting, some are not. This man then says, it will be to their benefit if they will follow him. A very important statement. Then he asked, the, the date plantations of a particular area, is the crop still coming out in abundance? They said yes. He said, I don't think it will last for long. And then he asked, Buhayra to Tabariya, that's the Arabic name. The English name is the Sea of Galilee. The Jews call it Lake Kinneret. It is the largest sea in the Holy Land. It is from the Sea of Galilee that that whole of the Holy Land gets water, the Sea of Galilee. He said, is there any water in the Sea of Galilee? They said, yes, plenty water. 
He said, I don't think it's going to last for long. And then he said, I am Dajjal. I am Dajjal. And when I am released, I'm going to enter every single town and city. But notice, he didn't say Kampung. <laughs> he said, when I am released, I'm going to enter every town and city. Except Mecca and Medina. Because the angels will bar me. Which means at the time when the Jal's day will be like our day, and he appears in the world as a human being, at that time he cannot enter Makkah and Medina, the angels will guard him.